Hello, let's talk about anemia of chronic disease. I wanted to bring this one up immediately after iron deficiency anemia because they do present similarly. Notice that iron systemically is gonna be low in both of them. What do they also have in common? They're typically microcytic anemias. They're gonna start off normal cytic, but by the time the patient presents with symptoms, these are typically microcytic anemias reflecting a little bit higher degree of an anemia than when the patient first developed it. And these things are typically asymptomatic at first. So apart from that, and then you just differentiate them based on the iron studies because in iron deficiency anemia, ferritin is gonna be low. Why? Because you don't have any iron. So systemic iron stores, which ferritin is reflective of, are low. Now, notice that in anemia of chronic disease, ferritin is high, although blood iron is low. So if you understand this, you understand the whole pathology. You've got iron in anemia of chronic disease. You just can't get it out of macrophages in the bone marrow to give it to red cell precursors to make hemoglobin with, hence the anemia. So when we have chronic inflammation, systemic inflammation for a while, our bodies respond as if it was an infection because the cytokines, many of the cytokines released by chronic inflammation are the same pro-inflammatory biomarkers released by a widespread infectious disease. So our bodies can't tell the two apart. Hope that makes sense. Now, evolutionarily, Many, many microbes reproduce with the assistance of iron, the metal, the atom. And somehow our bodies know that. They know that if we have a lot of iron floating around, this infection is going to get worse. So how the body responds to a bad systemic infection is by sequestering its iron, trapping it in the bone marrow, inside macrophages, that's the cell type, and it locks iron in those macrophages and it throws away the key. And it says, all right, we can get this iron out when the infection's gone. Problem is in a chronic disease process, the infection hasn't gone away. Or maybe it's inflammation, okay, which is really similar to an infection, again, from a cytokine standpoint. And if you're just living with this chronic disease, such as SLE or a systemic autoimmune vasculitis or sarcoidosis, that inflammation will not just go away. And so the degree of anemia in these patients will get worse and worse and worse as iron stays locked inside your bone marrow because your body can't tell the difference between your autoimmunity or your cancer and a bacterial infection. Now, how does this happen? What mechanisms mediate locking that iron in the bone marrow? The answer is hepcidin. You see hepcidin, iron's hiding. Iron is nowhere to be found in both iron deficiency anemia and anemia of chronic disease. So in anemia of chronic disease, you got a lot of this hepcidin that is blocking iron uptake from the gut. It's also keeping iron stored away inside macrophages. There it is right there in the middle of page 10 here. Increased hepcidin causes iron sequestration in macrophages. So why are you making hepcidin? Because there's chronic inflammation and hepcidin is upregulated by those inflammatory cytokines. So when hepcidin kind of puts the seal on the macrophage iron transporter, iron's not getting out of that cell. So your red cells don't get iron. So there's less erythropoiesis. So there's your anemia. Hepcidin overexpression 
is induced by lipopolysaccharide. There's the tie-in and interleukin-6. Interleukin-6 tells your liver to make acute phase proteins. Hepcidin excess causes ferroportin to go away and creates a functional iron deficiency. Which is why in anemia of chronic disease, you see normal to increased ferritin because you have iron in the body, but you can't get it out of your macrophages due to the presence of hepcidin. So if you have a lot of intracellular iron, you will have a lot of ferritin floating around. And if you have a lot of ferritin floating around, you will not be making a lot of transferrin there's no need to. Your liver will make transferrin when it senses low iron stores as reported to it by a low ferritin level. But if ferritin never goes down, transferrin never goes up. Now, if transferrin is down, understand TIBC, total iron binding capacity, that's also going to be reduced. If there's less transferrin, you're not going to bind as much iron. Compare that to iron deficiency anemia, in which everything we just said is kind of flipped. Go with blue for a different color. In iron deficiency anemia, you don't have iron. So what's ferritin? Low. So if ferritin is low, the liver sees that, starts making transferrin. Transferrin is high in iron deficiency anemia. If transferrin is high, what's your total iron binding capacity? Well, it's also high because TIBC and transferrin are the same thing. So in conclusion, what these two pathologies have in common is they are microcytic anemias with low iron. And then after that, the rest of the, the remainder of the iron study is totally different between the two of them. And this anemia of chronic disease is going to be due to infection or widespread inflammation. Anything that makes IL-6, interleukin-6, can get the ball rolling on this. That can include a cancer. That can include an autoimmunity such as SLE or vasculitis could include rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, sarcoidosis, those sorts of things. Now, here's another way to differentiate them. If you were to take a bone marrow aspirin, which you really shouldn't have to to confirm this, because number one, it's presenting in a patient who's got a history that's going to push you in the direction of anemia of chronic disease. Even though iron deficiency is very, very common, if you get that panel back and ferritin is high, there is no way on earth it can be iron deficiency anemia. So add that high ferritin to a history that should make you suspicious of a chronic disease or inflammation, and that's your diagnosis. But if you look at the bone marrow, then you will see inside the bone marrow just a ton of dark blue staining macrophages. And we're staining Prussian blue to see if there's any iron in there. And in iron deficiency anemia, you're not gonna see any blue stain. There's no iron in that bone marrow. But in anemia of chronic disease, you have got iron in every single macrophage. And it can't get out because hepcidin is keeping that door locked shut. And that's anemia of chronic disease.